but I thought Aberdeen were denied a Stonewall penalty, and I thought the f the foul before it was laughable. Put me right on the spot here, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think anyone that was watching that game thought you instantly pointed for a penalty. So did um, I. So, uh, yeah, I just think that sometimes those decisions are, are baffling, to be honest. Um, I personally don't like VAR at all. I think it takes away the moment that all fans want to go to games is to celebrate goals and to, and to be um, in that moment when they score. I think VAR now ruins that moment because people don't celebrate as much because you don't want to look like a, an idiot fan that's you know, celebrated and then two minutes later it gets called offside for a, a toenail. So I'm all for scrapping VAR, which I don't think will happen anytime soon. But What are the players uh, who are discussing it? Because you have to play the game. Um, is there a real growing unrest among players about it all? Um, I think yes and no. When I played in Australia for Sydney, we had it. So I've played with it probably for the last five seasons now. So um, yeah, I've kind of seen everything that's happened from you know us scoring a goal and it getting it brought way back because it was a foul you know a minute earlier. Um, I just feel like it's just losing that little bit of um, thing. When it first came in, it was for clear and obvious errors that the referee made and now feel that it's been re-refed um, but it's just one of those things that you have to get on with now as players we don't really have too much of a say but I think if you asked the majority of players and fans they'd probably prefer it without it. Yeah um, I, I, I'm interested to see what changes get your thinking cap on what changes <clears throat> you would like to see in the summer because we're going to talk about that because the game itself, Ruffy, I may as well get may as well get everybody's take on it. Am I just mm -hmm. out as the lone wolf? I know it's very difficult for mm -hmm. you as a player, but I'm looking and thinking that's a penalty. Well, first of all, I don't think it was a foul. My biggest uh, grievance of the whole thing is why did he not blow if he thought it was a foul? Why did he let it continue until No Carter Vickers made the the challenge, you know, because if you watch it over and over again, he lets the play continue. Sure enough, if he thinks it's a foul, it's a foul, you blow your whistle right away. Yeah. Now, and I keep going back to this. But is there an onus now that they're waiting for yeah, something? That's I what I was going to say way, there. Yeah. Is he in contact with VAR while that's going on? While that, that play is going on, could somebody be saying to him, check that foul? In my mind, no, Ruffy. He's in my mind, once the phase of play is over, they then say, delay, delay, delay. There is something to, to look at here. Mm -hmm. And then they will look at it. So but They never th looked at it. No, all, all I'm saying is, can somebody ear to ear say, that's a foul, don't not, give not a penalty, as, that's a foul. Not as plays going on. I think. Well, I, why did he not make the decision then? Because well, it's not a foul. I thought, he, I thought if he thought it was a foul right away, he should have said, he should have blown the whistle. Oh, Cameron Carter Ricker thought it was a foul because right away he has his head in his hands. He, and he, we spoke yeah. to him after it and he said he, he thought he'd conceded, he thought he'd blown for the penalty. But as Ryan mentioned there, uh, Ali, the reason why, in my mind, I could hear people shouting it, the reason why he didn't blow is because referees now are letting all the phase of play go mm -hmm. and then they'll, they'll say, well, somebody's going to pick up my mistake at well, the end. Well, the, the, the really difficult Difficult or, or the problematic example of that was in the first half with Liam Scales. So because of that, when the ball hit his hand, now I think he was marginally, probably on the line or maybe just outside, but that's what I think happened. So the, the, the linesman doesn't flag, he doesn't say that there's been the use of a hand. They let it go on and he basically said, I'll let the referee have a look at it. So obviously then they call it back, they have a look at it, they look, there's no penalty, but you can't then bring it back for a free kick because you've allowed play to continue. So if he'd flagged at the time and then said, take a look at it, yeah. he could have awarded the free kick. So if you're Aberdeen there, you're feeling quite aggrieved too. Yeah, um, as far as the overall game, I mean... Uh I mean, just, it's a great game to watch, wasn't it? Brilliant, wasn't it? I mean, it's one of those ones where <coughs> you're at the game, you're sitting there going, this is madness because you're caught up in the fans. If you're sitting and watching on the television, you're thinking, you know, what, I always remember a, a great Manchester City manager that Ruffy remembers, uh, Joe Mercer, and he said to Joe after a game, what makes a great game? And he went, two rotten defences. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, that summed it up perfectly, didn't it? Yeah, I, I think both teams um, put on a real good spectacle. Um, you know, like you said, the defence was maybe a little bit warning from both sides, but you know, I thought all the goals were good. The atmosphere around the game was good. Um, you know, Aberdeen have the high of scoring in the last minute of normal time, last minute of extra time to take it to penalties, get to the penalties. Joe Hart steps up. I think everybody's like, what's going on? And um, 
yeah, sort of summed up Scottish football in that sort of one instance in that one game with, with everything that's gone on this season. But um, yeah, I'm just glad that it was a good game. Um, it was one that I enjoyed watching at home and um, hopefully get there at some point again. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the ultimate thing for players. They love to get to that occasion. When you are at a semi-final, sometimes semi-finals can be dull. Mm -hmm. But as Ryan's mentioned there, Ruffy, it was really exciting. It was swaying from one end to the other. Uh, you know, I noticed a number of people talking about Aberdeen really stepped up to the plate. They surprised me. I thought they were going to get hammered because they've been absolutely woeful. Yeah, they they did what we were saying. Harps should have done against Rangers. Got that first goal. When you get a first goal in a semi final, the whole place just lifts. All your fans are lifted. There's a buzz. It sets you back maybe ten, fifteen minutes to get back into the game. You know, because you don't want to lose another one. Uh, and all the players were up for it, and quite rightly so. It's just unfortunate the boy made the mistake for Celtic to get the first goal, you know, which made the whole place erupt Celtic-wise. So after that, you know, it was just end-to-end, -end and uh, it was who was going to make the most mistakes. Yeah, I, I, we interviewed Angus McDonald's dad um, prior to the game, and it was all set up nicely. And as I watched the interview, and I thought, oh, that's great, they've got his dad, you know, he's, he's there to see... He's there to see his son, and then he just has a nightmare. I mean, I don't know what he was doing, Ryan. There's nothing worse. I mean, at that point, there seems to be this strange obsession now with modern-day football to just roll it about, maybe look yeah. for the square ball across. He's the last man, I'm thinking, launch it. Yeah, it's... Um, luckily, well, I don't want to... I don't think I've been caught in that situation. Probably someone on Twitter will mention that I have been. But, yeah, uh, you know, I think that just shows you the emotions. He gives away that goal and then he scores at the end. So you just have those highs and lows in football and he's experienced it all in one game. But um, Did you, you think Aberdeen out. were going to win at one point? At one point, yeah, yeah, I did. I did. I thought they had the ascendancy into the, the second half. Um, you know, just scoring those late goals is just such a... Celtic would have been thinking, that's us done, 2-1, scoring last minute, then they've got, oh, got another 30 minutes. Aberdeen's got that lift of, you know, we've scored two already, we're playing well. They've got players in their team that can make a difference, and I think that's probably what showed throughout this extra time as well. I thought they were probably a slightly better team in the in extra time, and um, I think a lot of Aberdeen fans will probably be wondering where was that team all season because they have got a really really good squad there, and it just goes to show that when they're all on on their game that they're. A, a game for anyone. Yeah, um, Ruffy, two brutal points here. Just on that point, with which which you mentioned there, which is. Um, you know, Aberdeen's performance uh, and a number of people have come out uh, and said, uh, in fact, let's hear from Peter uh, Levin, first of all, just on the point of the performance, first of all. This is what the Aberdeen manager had to say at the end of the game. He texted me last night, just wished me good luck. Uh, I'm sure he would have been watching. I don't think his game's till tomorrow or on Monday. Uh, listen, he, he can see there's a good squad here. Uh, there's ability there and obviously the heart and desire's there as well. So, listen, it's, it's, it's up to the boys to keep performing like that. I said that's the standard for the next five games, so take it from there. OK, he's talking about Jimmy Tillin, who will be watching mm -hmm. that game. Um, I'm afraid I don't agree with that, Ruffy. I think he needs a clear out. That, that squad's got four managers a sack. Yeah, and he'll have to judge it on the whole season. You're not going to judge it on the semi-final, but it'll be the new manager coming in that will make that decision. I do think that there is quality in that side. I just think they were really lacking in confidence, a lot of the players. Uh, there was no consistency level at all. One minute you'd see a good bit and then a bad bit. And Getting into the game, I'm sure they'd have been you know, worried a wee bit about the game, but getting the first goal, you know that. Everybody's up, everybody's going, go, oh, we've got a chance here. So the rest of the season just goes out the window. You just focus on that particular game. Yeah. It's one game, Ali. Mm -hmm. They've had a whole season. The Dons fans <coughs> and, and you know, like St Johnston fans, mm -hmm. like uh, Ross County fans. There's a heck of a lot of travelling to do, and those Dons fans have watched them. You know, it's it's been I hate the pun, but it has been a false dawn time and time again. Yeah, one manager you. comes in, not enough experience mm -hmm. goes out, and then we get to the debacle, which is yeah. Neil Warnock. Been perennial underachievers across the last few campaigns. I, I think. It's a strange one. I think they've got the spine and the nucleus of a very good squad, but it's just not been reflected in results. You've seen it in sporadic games this season. Eintracht Frank Frankfurt, Rangers, the performance against Celtic. I think um, I think Aberdeen fans would be entitled to ask where that spirit and energy and aggression has been 
across the duration of the campaign. Um, but I, I think that must be a particular frustration. I think they do have good players in there. Majofsky, I think that was his second goal. I think he'd only scored two goals in 12 going into it. But he had Celtic spooked. Every time Majofsky had the ball, particularly in that first half, you could sense the apprehension from Scales and from Carter Vickers. He, he, he carried a bit of menace. Playing with a real confidence, he just um, had that aura about him that all good strikers have. That he looked as though he was, he knew the way to go. But um, I think if you're an Aberdeen fan, you'd be tearing your hair out. Yeah, um, Ruffy, what about goalkeepers taking penalties? That's all right if you're if you're Arthur Boric and you decide to put it in the post yeah. each time against Dundee United. But I'm not. There's not too many. I think there was a great goalkeeper. I don't know if he played for Colombia, um, uh, Chilabear. And he used to hit free kicks, kicks yeah. 25 yards out, and he could bend them into the roof of the net. And of course, you had. Um... Hamish McAlpine and Dundee United. Yep. I think it's okay if you're taking penalties throughout the season, but for a goalkeeper to sta step up there, and there's another four or five outfield players, you know, with a technical ability, you would think more than a goalkeeper. But I mean, if he's taking, goal if he's taking penalty kicks and training, uh, goalkeepers used to come up and take penalty kicks and training just for a laugh. You know, to see yeah. if you were as good yeah. as other people. You don't walk up in the semi-final. You've never hit one all year and expect <laughs> you're going to... He was so confident, wasn't he? He was, yeah. he was laughing and joking, even when he missed it and even when he was making the saves. He, he, he just seems a special kind of guy, you know, who doesn't let anything get to him. And, but to step up in the semi-final and, and miss it, I mean, he's very, very fortunate he saved you know, the last one because yeah. if Aberdeen had went on and won it in the penalty mm -hmm. kicks, he would have come in for a bit of criticism. The thing yeah. is as well, the subsequent penalty kicks were good. Alistair yeah. Johnson and then um, Iwata's penalty, they were good penalties, yeah. you know, so you're thinking, it's not as though uh, there, there's maybe like, oh, you're the fifth best taker, just go, going ahead, although apparently that was the plan all along. Yeah, well, uh, listen, uh, I mean, Brendan Rodgers, this is what he had to say about Joe Hart because he's got that special mentality. We looked at penalties during this week and Joe was always designated to take the fifth. His mentality allows him to not let it bother him and we saw what happened in the end. He missed one, but he still ended up the hero. <coughs> now, I don't know about you, Ryan, but um, it was Joe Hart, <coughs> uh, you know, had a big dinner last night at Celtic Park and boy, that's a fine line <laughs> for testing it, isn't it? Can you imagine? Oh. He misses the penalty and Aberdeen going to win, and then they go, ladies and gentlemen, Joe Hart. <laughs> <laughs> Could all have gone pear shaped, but for the big man, it worked out well for him. Yeah, I think that goes to show you that it's not just he's just decided, you know, like mm. Sunday League football, he's just decided I'm going to take the fifth one and be the hero. They've obviously worked on that during the week and had a plan, but um, yeah, like Ali said, I think there's there maybe be a few more players that. Um, possibly have a little bit more experience in taking penalties in that situation that could have done. You can it. imagine, you know, none of the neutrals, nobody watching it knows that they've decided he's going. Yeah. Can you imagine when he walked up to take it, how the fans must have went, oh my God. Yeah. Celtic happening? fans were really yeah. nervous. I, obviously, like where we were sitting in the press box, you're surrounded by sports. People, they couldn't watch. People were turned, people yeah. were like facing that us. That was a sign of like, a good game, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> couldn't, couldn't, couldn't look. Like, yeah. uh, people were, well, were genuinely, I think, I thought Celtic fans were, they obviously celebrated. I thought they were quite subdued at the end. I think they know. Like, uh, I think this weekend is flipped the narrative again, this idea that it's just a straight procession that you're going to, to the title. I think Saturday was a reminder that this, there are frailties within this Celtic team as well. Yeah, well, if I mentioned, <coughs> I mentioned the positives of, of, of Cyril Desser, I've got to mention the positives of the man they substituted. The substitute was substituted. Uh, James Forrest, for me, was the best player in the park. Okay. I mean, not only does he score the goal, but every pass he made was just of an experienced player with a medal all to die for. He's only 32, Ryan. If somebody picks him up, if he decides he wants to play regular every week somewhere else, they're getting a smashing player. Yeah, he's, um, do you know his record against St. Johnson? I think every time I've played against him, he's scored against me. So I don't know if he wants to, <laughs> if he wants to come to St. Johnson next season, I think we're going to be happy for him to come. But um, yeah, I've honestly played against him since we were kids. I'm two years older than him. So I remember the season that he kind of broke through. I was at Hearts and up against him. And then ever since, he's just, you know, his record for Celtic is unbelievable. And, um, you know, for a homegrown player to have gone on and achieved what he has done, I think, again, similar to Tavernier, he gets a little bit of unnecessary flack but I think um, at the weekend it showed you that there's there's still a real good quality player in there who knows how to perform at the high level 
in big games and take those moments. I, yeah. I think he's Celtic, one of Celtic's best wingers still. So I, I would start him. Well, the manager think, thinks uh, that, but he just needs yeah. he fought three or four others. That, you know, <laughs> I, that was his way Brennan, of saying it. Brennan, <laughs> Brennan's another one got away with one as well, mm. you know, making that substitution. substitution you know, yeah. I know managers have to make decisions, you know, and he made a decision, right, Aberdeen were coming into the game, I better get another centre-half one. But to take Forrest off and put a centre-half one and then lose a goal, and a crucial goal I did wonder if Forrest time. was injured. He did. He seemed to catch his knee at, at one point, and it was bothering him for a wee while after. It. I did wonder whether or not he was he, he was okay. But yeah, I, I agree with you. But I thought you know he was on the pitch for what, ninety seconds or something when he scored. He had a chance before that. Yeah. He just felt that like he he was on the park for a matter of minutes, and he'd done more than you know what had happened. What what Celtic had had for the hour. Before it, I just thought he injected a bit of creativity and a bit of calmness, some assuredness. He he was responsible for opening up another couple of opportunities there. He should have done better with one of them. I think that's been a feeling from Celtic this term too, like when they're on top of games, controlling games, he can't quite put it to bed. You saw it at Ibrox a couple of weeks ago, that first half, utterly dominant, and yet you just can't kill it off. You can't just put put it to bed and secure the points and they let, they're not strong enough defensively that then teams can come back. OK, the two of them are going to play in the final. It's uh, Celtic's 60th Scottish Cup final. They've got 41 wins. Rangers 53rd. They've got 34. And it's the 60th <coughs> Old Firm final since 2002, Ruffy. Um, and suddenly, by the time we all get there, we'll be looking at Rangers and Celtic and thinking this is going to be either... It could potentially be a double for Some. either of them or a treble. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Yeah, and I think from a neutral point of view and probably the sponsor's point of view as well, that's the game they wanted, you know, and I think uh, for it to be the last game of the season, it's the one you want to win. It's the one that you, if you win it, you send your, your fans away for a couple of months, you know, high as a kite. If you lose it, you've got to start rebuilding and uh, a lot of pressure on both sides. And I think it's going to be an open game, as we've already discussed. I think both teams are, uh, I think somebody used the word a bit flaky, uh, and uh, I think I hope we get in more goals. I hope it's an exciting game. 